Hi everyone, Mechanid here. These are my thoughts on the new updates and news for 30k. We're trying out a slightly different format today, so it'll be more of a sit and talk episode for your second screens while you're off doing other things. Today, we're covering the new roadmap eh, for 30k, as well as the leaks for the Martian Civil War book. So with all that in mind, my name is Mechanid. Let's get started. First off, it's a good thing GW actually does this. They are under no obligation as a company to do these sorts of preview shows, and I would like to give them the benefit of the doubt with this, as it's nice to see them try and do something in the spirit of the community. However, there are some problems. Right, where to begin? First off, a third of this list is just what we've had previously last year, and taking that away makes this PNG even more bare bones. This feels like when you're repeating yourself for a school test to try and reach an arbitrary word count. This map is also incredibly vague at best. At least with the previous roadmap, we at least got the vague season that the products were going to be released in. Now, we only have a rough year, if that. On the upside, at least GW is not promising anything, so they can't let us down there, I guess. Next, tying in Legion's Imperialis into Horus Heresy is a big mistake. Since both games are sharing the spotlight, I doubt that Legions, being the smaller of the two games, haha, ha, will get far less of the spotlight, and both will receive a diminished attention therein. Tanks. This is particularly frustrating, as we've had tanks take up the vast majority of releases and we're still waiting on plastic breaches, plastic recon marines, affordable characters like tech marines, and also legions like iron warriors are still waiting on a lot of their character sculpts. In short, we don't need tanks, we need more workhorse units like infantry and not new things to take up shelf space. Furthermore, and the most annoying thing for me, is the great big something new every month. The issue for me is what does that even look like? It could be a rules update, a free PDF, another Imperial Fist character, a new faction, another Imperial Fist character, a new range refresh, or a brand new armor mark, or another Imperial Fist character. Also, since the map includes both Legion's Imperialis and Heresy, that something new every month could mean either one, which means that unless you play both games, there's a lower likelihood that you'll be satisfied with either release. Next, there is nothing on this roadmap that is in any way binding, as shown by the previous roadmap from 2023 and 24, where they promised plastic melee weapons in the spring of 24, and that is yet to materialize. Finally, these sorts of pre-releases, teaser shows, are just huge marketing and advertising stunts, and they leave a bad taste in my mouth. In regards to what's been teased, I've got some predictions I'd like to make. For the Mechanicum, it's likely that we'll see variants of the existing models, things like the Thanatar Calyx off of the regular Thanatar kit, and the Karaknos, which is based off the Triaros chassis. I don't think we'll see anything like the Arl Attacks, which is yet to get a model, and I don't think we'll see one because of how niche it actually is. In regards to Space Marines, I don't think we'll see anything like Breaches and Recon Marines anytime soon. This is entirely based off how long it took Games Workshop to get Assault Marines out, so I don't believe we're going to see them anytime soon. There is also a leak from the Martian Civil War book going around, and while I've personally not seen anything that says it's legit, only time will tell in that regard, it does make for a sobering read. Straight away, I see that there is a distinct lack of new stuff for the Mechanicum, and given that this book is about the Schism of Mars and the Mechanicum, that is particularly egregious. No unique characters, no new demon engines, nothing like soul grinders or even something crazy like a scrap tank. I'll do a full breakdown if these are confirmed to be true, as and when, or when the full book comes out. Also, judging by the contents page, I don't think this is going to be a very big book, so it'll be doubtful if you'll be able to get your full money's worth out of this. There were also some leaks for some of the characters. I'll post them on screen now. While I've not heard if these are real or fake, we'll have to see when the time comes. First, Camber Diaz. Seems pretty pushed as befits an Imperial Fist character. For 120 points, so the price of a stock Legion Praetor, you get more gear, and while you have one less attack and one less point of leadership, you save points on not having to buy any equipment. He also gets a 4 plus feel no pain when he gets reduced to one wound. He also brings a special power sword that gets plus one strength and AP3 with rending 5 plus, but with two handed it's not going to hit as many times. You also get Master of the Legion, which makes him an interesting side grade as opposed to Praetors and Delegatuses. His Warlord trait is the Line Unbroken. At the end of your turn, if he is within 3 inches of an objective, you can activate the Line Unbroken, which grants Fearless and Counterattack while on the objective. He also grants your army an extra reaction in the Assault phase. Camber Diaz is pretty cool, with rules that reflect his novel appearances, but he's not doing anything that we haven't seen before, and I think he'll get lost in the sea of other, better Imperial Fist characters. Aster Crone. 
For 155 points, you get a Blood Angels Captain with two Hand Flamers and the Safian Shard Axe, which rocks plus one strength, AP three, rending five plus, and Duelist Edge one. The profile making him a pretty decent duelist. His special rule, the Ghost of Safe, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, means that when he dies for the first time, you get to roll a dice, and on a four plus, you put him back into reserves. And if it's the fourth turn, you can have him automatically enter play at the start of your next turn. His Warlord trait, the Reforged 94th, grants any Blood Angels Inductii within six inches the ability to make sweeping advances, and they get plus one attack on the charge even if the charge is disordered, which is pretty good. He also grants the army an extra movement phase reaction. Aster Crone is a pretty neat and thematic Blood Angels HQ for a fluffy Inductii army. While he's far from the biggest and the baddest, I really like these sort of side grade HQs that help out thematic armies especially. Also, just look at this guy's drip. He's absolutely iced out. Finally, KD's next, the most expensive of the three. At 165 points, you get a Super Moria Tad with a stack of special rules. He can't have his ballistic skill reduced and he always hits on a two plus, including snapshots. He also ignores all shrouded saves. Also, also, at the start of the battle, he can be deployed inside any area terrain anywhere on the board, including your opponent's deployment zone. This happens before infiltrators, letting you screen out areas even if you're going second, and if he arrives from reserves after the first game turn, he can come on from any point on the battlefield's edge, which is neat. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a jump pack, which makes him slow, and with such short range on his pistols, that may make it hard to get shots off. Speaking of, his Fulcrum Hand Cannons, of which he has two, have a number of profiles, all at strength 6. First one is for sniping, with Brutal 2 and AP 2. The second, for crowd clearing, with AP 4 and Pistol 6. And a third that can be used in melee, which is AP 4, Brutal 2, Rending 5+, plus, and Precision Strikes on a 4+, plus, which is a really nasty combination for character hurting, especially considering his above average initiative. Cady's next can be run in any Raven Guard or Black Shield detachment, but never as a Warlord or compulsory HQ. He also can't join any units, which will make him rather fragile and easy to pick off. While it's nice to see the Raven Guard get more love, we already have a fair few Blood Angels characters and way too many Imperial Fist characters. As much as I like Camber Diaz, his death in the books, spoiler alert, was one of the more impactful sections and really stuck a chord with me, the fact that we are getting another Imperial Fist character is just silly. I appreciate that the Siege of Terror is primarily an Imperial Fist, Blood Angels, White Scars novel, but we need to see more love for the other legions, it's just not fair. Same as above, if these characters are confirmed to be legit, I'll do a review when they come out. Another issue I have with this leak is that the Automata Malefica is more than likely just the Demon Engines PDF put to print, so if you want that, you can just go to the Warhammer community right now and get it for free. This is a shame, as this book would be perfect to flesh out Demon Engines and to get them more love. Demon Engines are one of the coolest things in 30k, and they're so underutilized. It's easy to play the ideas guy, so I'm going to do that, but why is there no bonus rules for traitor forces to put demons into their vehicles? Something like a corn demon that gives a plus one to strength on ramming attacks and extra speed, but you always have to make ram attacks with your vehicle if you can. It would be so easy, and we don't even need those rules to be good, only fun and fluffy. As a final note, we'll likely see more traitor specific choices for the Mechanicum in here, but I'm not holding my breath for anything that's going to be particularly interesting. I'm not that enthusiastic about this book. In summary, I am not impressed. These roadmaps are supposed to, in theory at least, show what is to come to help the customer make informed purchases. This overly vague and ambiguous PNG is just a lose-lose option that has no utility or function. I wouldn't be surprised if this roadmap is invalidated in a few months, and I think its only function is churning the rumor engine that GW is so fond of. And yes, by making this video I am feeding that same rumor engine, however I would like to think that I can contribute more to the discussion than just saying, ooh I'm so excited for the next product, I can't wait to borrow the next product. I don't think GW likes it when they have people talking about their release like this. They probably don't care though, to be honest. Also, things like this don't do them any favours in the court of public opinion. Yes, while you'll get people creaming themselves over the barest hint of something on the horizon, everyone else is likely to be less than impressed. In short, I'm not happy with it. And I believe that these practices and symptoms are a cause of GW having such a stranglehold on the consumer base. I'd advocate for customers being more conservative with their spending habits and not getting swept up in the fear of missing out. 
All that aside, and before we get too preachy, this video was fun to make, and it was interesting to see the different takes around the internet. I'd love to know what you guys think of this roadmap, especially if you would rather have this roadmap than nothing at all. Personally, I'd be fine with no roadmap as opposed to this, as it's left a very bad taste in my mouth. Either way, let me know what you think in the comments below. Links to all the articles and videos that you've seen in the background are in the description. My name is Mechanid. Thanks for watching. Also, also, at the start of the battle, he can be deployed inside area terrain anywhere on the board, including your appointment, your appointments?